Did you ever try to build an AI application but had no idea where to start? Yeah, it can be confusing, but don't worry. I'm here to help. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple AI project from scratch. We are going to dive into sentiment analysis, a super cool AI technique that lets you figure out if a piece of text is positive or negative or natural. Think about how useful that could be for analyzing a customer reviews, social media posts and ton of other stuff. Anyways, my name is Shehab Dood and welcome back to IT Samurai Teacher. Today we are using the power of Azure AI Studio to build our own sentiment analysis model. We'll go through the whole process step by step, setting up the project, choosing the right model, testing it out and finally deploying it so you can actually use it. Whether you are a total beginner or Azure AI Studio or just want to learn some new AI tricks, this tutorial is for you. So let's jump in and let's start our project. Okay, jump into my uh, HTTPS AI.Azure.com and I'm in the all project, all project section. I'm going to create a new project before that. So let's go back again. So what exactly we are building today in this project, we'll set up a model that can analyze text and tell us if it's positive or negative or natural. Sentiment analysis is useful for things like understanding customer feedback, monitoring social media or automating content moderation. Now, the first step is to create a new project. In Azure AI Studio, click on the new project as you can see on the top left and it will begin to setting up your new environment for sentiment analysis. Uh, now let's give a, a project name for I'm calling this uh, sentiment analyzer sentiment analyzer sentiment analyzer so I didn't put a space so uh, so I'm going to assign to a hub either an existing one or create a new hub and choose your preferred location once that is done we're ready to move on to the fun part i'm going to click create the project and it takes few minutes uh you know it's creating project it will circle um not sure how, why it takes some time. Um, I believe it's going to create a lot of stuff on the background. So that's why it takes some time. A lot of uh, parts you can see it's done. Now with our project is set up and is up, it's time to select the model. In the model catalog, you can see in here, the left side, I'm going to click that. Uh, we're going to search for sentiment analysis and we'll be using, uh, I'm going to show you the name. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type sentiment analysis. Okay, under sentiment analysis, I'm going to uh, I'm going to choose this one. Uh, let me click this one. You can see Fini, uh, finite, finite automata, Bertweed based sentiment analysis. This is the model I'm going to use, and we're going to deploy. So if we take a look on in here, okay, let's take a look at the model overview. So we can see the model name in here. Uh, it's very hard to tell. Affinity Automata, Bert, Beat, Pay Sentiment Analysis. 
the model is designed for text classification and focus on sentiment analysis. It's based on the bird tweet model, uh, a variant of the popular bird model, which has been fine-tuned using the SEM Eval 2017 dataset, around 40,000 tweets in English. The use case, POS, positive sentiment, and you can see NEG, negative sentiment, NEU, natural sentiment. This makes useful for applications that need to analyze social media posts, product reviews, or any other text-based feedback to understand user sentiment. About licensing, uh, this model used the uh, Fisi Sentimento library, which is open source but limited to non-commercial and scientific research. It relies on two datasets, TASS and uh, SAM uh, 2017 uh, data set license. Keep in mind that third party data set license may impose their own restrictions and model and evolution uh, and inter inference, right? So there are Python notebooks provided for evaluating the model and you can deploy it using Python or CLI with uh, YAML. The in Inference samples shows how the model analyzes input data. In the sample, two statements are processed. Alright, so today was amazing day. You can see in here. Okay, so you can see today was amazing day. This, uh, the model assigns a positive sentiment with a high confidence score 0 to 0.99. And the next one is it was unfortunate unfortunate series of events. The model identifies this is a negative sentiment also with high confidence 0 0.94. To how to use this model? For developers, they are ready to use Python script for both real-time and batch sentiment analysis. These samples notebooks are SDK. Uh, example dot ipynb uh, for real time analysis, and there's another one text classification online endpoint ipynb for online deployment. Uh, so, in summary, this model is perfect for automating sentiment analysis tasks, making it easier to handle customer feedback or social media content. Uh, social media content analysis without manual effort. You can implement it through the uh, provided Python examples and integrate into any application needing sentiment insights. Okay, let's go and uh, do our necessary project uh, next steps. Now let's go ahead. We can, I gave you the brief description of the module overview. Now we uh, the next step is we need to deploy. So uh, now that we have select our model, we need to deploy it. So we're going to click deploy. And Azure AI Studio will handle the heavy lifting in the background. So uh, before I jump into this one, I'm going to tell you that. Th so once the deployment succeed, we'll have an API endpoint that allows us to use this model. Now let's go ahead and see what are the options, deploy model options we have right now, right here. So uh, you can see in here, uh, the first one, current project resources, sentiment analyzer, that's the name we gave. So this is the name of the project or workspace where the sentiment analysis model is being deployed. And after that, you can see virtual uh, machine uh, this is the virtual machine selection. So standard D4AS version 4. This is the VM instance type you are selecting for the deployment. It has 4 cores, 16 GB of RAM and 32 GB disk and it costs 0 0.19 cents. So that's been 19 cents per hour, 
remember that that's why 19 cents per hour the vm is where the model will run for inference when making prediction uh, predictions okay so not everything is free so once you deploy it will uh, calculate it will cost you uh, for for testing purposes it should be fine i mean just jump in and do this it's 19 cents per hour but keep an eye on your azure subscription pay as you go see how much it costs if you're not using make sure it's disabled so you should you should be fine uh, i'm using pay as you go so for me that's fine for me uh, so we can do our own uh, testing on project models and next in, uh, instance count right so one this is indicates that the only one instance of this vm is being deployed increasing the count can allow us more instance which could help scale for large large workloads one is enough for me for because i'm doing as a testing project and after that we can see endpoint configuration you can see new or oh, existing so you can you are choosing to create a new endpoint where and where the model is made accessible for users or application to send the data and get results endpoint name the name you have given this endpoint is sentiment analyzer dash another name added to that this name is important because the system will generate a unique url based on this for making api calls so this is very important got it and after that we can see uh, endpoint url so a url is generated is https slash slash sentiment analyzer dash that's the name he was talking about recently and west us3 interference ml azure.com score so you can see the location also there so this url will be used to send requests such as tweets or other texts to the model for sentiment analysis the model will return the results through the url and lastly we can see deployment name uh finometer bird weed base dash 12 the name of the model deployment this make it easier to track with specific version of the model you are deploying in this case version 12 and lastly you can see interference data collection is disabled you have chosen not to collect data on the model interference prediction process enabling this could allow you to collect feedback on how the model perform in the real world usage which is helpful for uh, retraining and improvement now i'm going to keep this everything as a default and i'm going to hit deploy now you can see your deploy is being created and you will be redirect in a moment to track this status i believe this will take some time because it's going to create the virtual machine assigning the calls and everything blah 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 everything so it takes some time so once it's done we're going to jump in okay successful succeed you can see the green checkbox excellent let's go quick uh, all this information in here so you can see uh, we have the name uh, now first of all it says deployment info and we see the name you can see the the version name in here and provision state uh, state is succeed this means your model deployment was successful and is ready to be used just in case if it's fail and everything that's been you have issue so for my it succeed if you follow this you should be good and created by shihab do that's me uh, and the creator of this deployment and after that uh, created uh, last update uh, october 2 2024 this model was created and last update at this time so you had the time range and after that we have traffic uh, allocation 100 percent all the traffic for this model endpoint is located to this deployment if you had a multiple versions or instance you could allocate traffic among them so uh, we can see instance counts is one this confirmed that the only one instance of the virtual machine be used for the deployment uh, compute type so dedicated sku 
standard D4AS version 4, you can see from here, you're using the dedicated version machine with 4 cores and 16 GB of RAM for your model's interference. Uh, you can see the model ID in here. So this is the identifier of the sentiment analysis model that you deploy. deploy. And after that, in the right side, you can see the endpoint, right? The target URI. This is the API endpoint URL where your model is accessible. And the link, you can send the request uh, to this URL to get sentiment uh, predictions. After that, we can see authentication type key. The endpoint is secured using a primary key API key. You will need this key to authenticate your request to the API. And after that, we can see the primary key. This is the secret key uh, partially hidden for security that you can use to access the endpoint. It can be regenerated if needed from this from here. You can see regenerate uh, option button. A Swagger URI. A Swagger URI is provided to help you integrate the model API. Swagger is a tool that automatically generates documentation for your API. You can use this link to explore how to make a request to the endpoint and test it, it uh, under this URL. You can see the JSON, swagger.json. So, uh, public network access enable so this indicates that the endpoint is accessible over the public internet allowing external application or users to access it and after that we can see api routes in here uh, so this section would typically provide details about the specific routes or paths that you can call on the endpoint for different functionalities and the lastly, we can see some useful links for application deployment. So code, sample, uh, repositories, and tutorial. So these links provide useful resources to help you start integrating the API into your applications. You can find example code and tutorials for developing your application using this model. That's very cool. You can, if you have time, go ahead and read all this uh, tutorial and uh, documentation. Now. Uh, summary in this page what we are seeing is the page gives you the control over how the model is deployed and accessible it also provides the details needed to integrate the model into your application by using the generate api endpoint and primary key by sending text data to this endpoint you can get back sentiment predictions from your model right Okay, now before we integrate the model, let's test it in the test selection under monitoring. So we can see we have a like monitoring tab in here too. Uh, we're going to click under here test. Okay, for example, let's try. I had a fantastic day. I had a fantastic day. So let's see. So this model correctly identified this is a, as a POS, meaning it's a positive sentiment. I had a fantastic day. So positive sentiment. You can test more centers to see how we classify different different emotions. Now let's try some uh, negative and like natural examples. Uh, I'm going to type. Mm, the service was awful. Let's see what we get. So it, the service was awful. I went to a, a restaurant and said the service was awful. So I type it here and test it out and show me energy. That's mean for uh, energy for a negative sentiment. The negative sentiment and the negative, right? So because I give service was awful. So it says it's a negative sentiment. If it it it, it find, I gave you a negative sentiment. Now next is, uh, today is it's raining. It's raining here. 
it's raining here and see N E U. So this meaning natural. It's raining here. It's natural, right? It's raining here. The modeler does a great job at distinguishing the different tones in the text. You can see it identify the POS uh, and identify N E G negative and identify a natural. So you can test it out and see. So this is how you know the query will identify results. Now, if you want to integrate this model, you grab this API key uh, and integrate to your own application. If you do Python or script, I'm not going to cover all of this in here. I'm going, I gave you everything, get this key and integrate to your application. So probably you need to uh, know how to create another application, maybe a Python script and stuff. but. Uh, my next videos I'm going to create all everything and integrate to a uh, different project integrate to my uh, applications so now think that you get this uh, I'm going to put it in description field uh, uh, simple Python script to integrate your website or something you know so you can grab this because you need this URL to communicate the target URL so everything so probably you will get some idea but this is the main thing you create the model right so once uh, once the deployed azure ai studio allows you to monitor and the model performance you can see in here model performance through the monitoring section here you can track the model uh, accuracy and usage over time ensuring it continues to perform well as more data is processed and you can see the logs in here so a bunch of logs so just in case if you want to troubleshoot you know what to do so uh, everything's perfect and that's it you have successfully built deployed and tested sentiment analysis model using azure ai studio with just a few simple steps we have covered a application that can process and text and return sentiment in real time if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell for the more ai and tech tutorials this is shiha from it samurai teacher see you on my next video thank you so much